Are you looking to learn more about felted soap? Needle felting, dry felting, wet felting? If so, then you're on the right video because today I'm going to answer some of the most common questions there are when it comes to felted soap. and welcome to today's video most common needle felted soap questions and answers my name is Iceland and on this channel snowflake forest felting I share needle felting videos have needle felting tutorials and share product reviews from time to time so if you're new and this interests you please consider subscribing and if you want to know more about anything you see here on this channel be sure and check the links down description below this video or leave a comment I'd love to connect with you there and as always if you think these videos may help someone please share them where you can. Now, let's get into these most common felted soap questions and answers. All right, so the first question is, is what is the significance of felted soap? And the answer to that is a few things. The first one being is it's gonna save your soap. Wool is gonna draw the moisture away from it, therefore the soap is going to last longer for you. Another is, is you have a built-in washcloth in a way. You won't have to be searching for a washcloth. The wool right there wrapped around it works like a washcloth and a bar of soap does together. Another great thing about felted soap is it doesn't leave the buildup like on your sink or your shower spot wherever you're leaving the soap. And so then the bar isn't just sticking there and you don't have a gross nasty spot you have to clean. Another significance of felted soap is it works as an exfoliant for your skin. You don't have to buy one of those soaps with the microbeads that aren't eco-friendly. This is definitely an eco-friendly option for you. The wool is an animal fiber and that with time is going to break down a lot faster than a plastic would. And it's probably going to be more gentle and healthier for your skin as well. The next question is, is what size of needle are you using? And I was using, and this is my go-to needle for most all my projects, is Clover USA's weight needle. It comes with five of them, so if they break, you have a backup on hand, you're not scrambling mid-project to wait for other needles to arrive or go purchase them somewhere. I'll have this link down in the description below, as well as many other themes. You can go and check those out later. Don't forget about the links. The next question is, is it sanitary? Yes, because soap is clean, the wool is going to be clean. Especially if you're doing a really thorough job of rinsing it before you're putting it back. I do think towards the end of the soap, as there becomes less soap and more wool, this is then when it's maybe not gonna be as sanitary as compared to that first fresh bar. Or even if you're keeping it around for long periods of time, it's not getting used, that could be an area where bacteria might build up and then therefore it wouldn't be as sanitary as one would like to think that it is. Again, it is soap and soap is a cleansing product. So it can also depend on how strong your soap is or what your soap is made of as well. The next question is, are you literally just pushing the wool into the felted soap? There's no extra skill needed. It looks surgical. This is in more reference to when I was putting a design on the felted soap. And yes, there is not a lot of skill needed to make felted soap, in all honesty. It is a very quick and simple process. Depending on how elaborate of a photo you want to put on your felted soap, then that's more when you might need a little bit of skill or practice with felting. The reason I am being super careful when felting the design on is because it is a very sharp barbed needle. It's grabbing the wool, it's pulling it, and it's entangling it together. And as I'm going into the soap, there is some friction and the risk of breaking the needle tip off into the soap. And I don't want that to happen, so I'm going straight in and straight out. There you can see the needle up close. This is some soap. I'll pierce it. And this is a pretty soft soap. But you know, there would just be, if you were dry felting this wool on, It's just gonna go into it very gently like so and start to push that fiber down into the soap and attach it. <laughs> and see the fibers, they stuck into it there. Felted soap should not be that complicated. It's just a fun craft that you can try 
and see if you like using felted soap as well. If you want to take it to another step and add on a design, that's up to you as well too. A lot of people I see prefer meshing wool fibers and having an array of color going around their soap, which is really beautiful too. So while we're here, let's talk about wet felting, dry felting, and needle felting. It's all felting. Wet felting is when you're using alternating cold and hot water. If you want to save water, get a bowl, one, with as hot as water as possible, that's going to shrink the wool, and two, a cold one to alternate the wool make it expand and shrink around that soap. Dry felting, needle felting, so you're using the needle to felt the wool together. The barb needle is entangling those fibers and making them meshed. Wet felting should only take about 15 minutes and you don't need to use a lot of running water. I got a lot of grief in one of my most popular felted soap videos. For how long it took running the water and cutting the wool i tried to be very careful and conscious of running the water i've always been i think the video just made it appear i was running the water way more than necessary i had made it so long ago and it was when i was first starting to make videos <laughs> so i admit it's not my best video and i did do a remake video of how to make felted soap that i thought was a little more beneficial. So I'll have both of those linked for you down in the description below. You can go and check them out. And then so with the length of time, wool roving is going to take longer automatically because when you're working with wool batting, the fibers are already going in different directions. So they're somewhat felted for you already. Whereas wool roving, the fibers have been combed out and they're going in the same direction. And then you're having to work to rearrange those to get them to lock up. I wanted to just make sure my felted soap were really well felted, so I went the extra length to make them felted, which seemed to take more like 20 or 30 minutes. If this is something that you're making for yourself, as you use it in the shower, you're going to continue to have it felt. If you're giving it away as a gift, you're going to want to make sure that it doesn't fall apart on them. And then the cutting of the roving. So much hate. I had no idea that was coming. If that was coming, I would have just took that out of the video. Everyone's like, you pull the wool apart, you're damaging the wool. It's gonna take you longer to felt it if you cut it. An experienced person would never cut wool. <laughs> well, I have been working with wool since I was 16, so basically over half my life. Over half my life. And cutting wool is not damaging it. I had only cut it in that video because of the next project that I wanted to work with. I was trying new themes and I wanted to see if having the roving cut would help me work with a straight edge that I was trying to achieve. If you cut the wool, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't mean you're not experienced. But yes, most people, when they're pulling from their roving bunch, they're going to pull it. They're not going to cut it with scissors. I think another reason why I cut it was because I was trying to not disturb the fibers as much as possible. I didn't want to affect them by pulling them apart and ending up with a thicker, longer, strung out bunch. I wanted it nice and thick. Besides the point. So let's get back on track with felted soap now. Do you have to rinse or wash the wool again after felting a design on it or decorating it? And the answer is no. If you want to see how it's going to hold up to some force of some water or some friction, by all means, you can test it, rinse it again. But if you don't want to and you've done a good job of felting your design on, you're most likely good to go. The next question is, is do the designs fall off as they are used? And the answer to this should be no. If you felt that your design on, it's going to hold and continue to shrink down around the soap. You may lose some of the color of the wool depending on how it was dyed. And you could lose a little bit of the design, like it might become misshapen, if just depending on how much friction you're using with it. But for the most part, it holds. It's actually really neat to watch this work and see what they look like at the end. So if you've made a really beautiful soap and you're worried about using it and it not looking the same, I say give it a try. You're just going to find that you really love it. And test it maybe. Just if you can move it with your finger like this, you might not have it felted on well enough. Felting is a very time consuming process and takes patience. And that's why felting it on with a needle after wet felting can help secure it in place. The next question is, is what do you do with the felt once the soap is gone? 
And there are a lot of answers to this question. One of your first options is, is you can continue to use it as an exfoliant. Maybe you have a body wash that you want to include with that and the wool really is gentle on your skin. You could add essential oils to it and put it in a closet or a storage bin which is then going to work as a bug repellent or maybe add a nice essential oil aroma to whatever you're storing. You could even use it as like a final last scrub brush on something that you might find is really dirty and you just want to throw the scrub brush away at the end. This is not going to be like a plastic scrub brush in the trash. This is going to be much more environmentally friendly. So I really recommend using any leftover wool from your felted soap. Scrub your sink, your bathtub, or whatever with it, and then dispose of it after that. The next question is, is, is it a waste of soap after all that rinsing? Is there even any soap left? And in my opinion, it is not a waste of soap. It is actually a soap saver. It helps the soap lather easier and faster. And I truly found that our bars of soap were lasting anywhere from two to four months on an average of three months compared to after a month of a non-felted soap, the soap was already gone. I think when you also put a bar of soap underneath the running water, that yes, that is very hard on the bar of soap and it washes it away. Whereas when you have it felted with the wool, the wool is is working to protect your soap so not as much of it is rinsing away. And again, if you're worried about how much you're rinsing the soap when felting it, don't even rinse it. Just have two separate bowls, a hot and a cold bowl, splash your wool and your soap down into it, and then pull it back out and go from there with the friction. The next question is, my wool is not sticking, what am I doing wrong? And then my question would be to you is what kind of wool are you using? Are you sure that it's wool and that it's not an acrylic fiber? Because acrylic fibers are not going to mesh the way wool does. Wool, when it gets wet, it shrinks up and it entangles with itself. Whereas acrylic fibers, they're just going to kind of hang out near each other. They're not going to act all shrink like the way wool does. The next question is, is what kind of wool did you use? And I have used various types of wool for felting my soap. Merino top, Cordale, Coopsworth, those are all great wools. Most likely any wool is going to work. You're just going to want to stay away from the acrylic fibers. The next question is, is I'm not getting a lather. What am I doing wrong? And then I would ask, what type of soap are you using? Did it lather in the first place without the wool? Maybe it's a type of soap that doesn't lather and that's okay. You should still be able to get the wool to felt around without a good lather. The lather does, yes, help, but when you're starting in the first place, you're going to want it wrapped tight and the lather will come later. So don't stress that as much. As long as the wool is entangling, you're going to end up with a felted bar of soap. The next question is, is can you use goat's milk for soap? And yes, that is a wonderful idea. If you have soap that's made of goat's milk, that's going to be great for your skin. The next question is, is can I do this with melt and pour soap? And yes, you can. You are going to find that harder soaps are going to felt much easier and hold up much better. If it's a soap that gets soft and soggy really fast already, it's probably not going to be the best choice of soap for a felted soap. But just make sure your soap is dry if you're doing a felted soap around the melt and pour soap. And then lastly here, I just want to stress, you don't need a lather when you begin. You're going to get that wool wrapped really tight around it, tie it off with the nylon so it's nice and secure, and then use two different bowls, hot and cold. Save that running water, use what's before you in the bowls and create your lather from there. And again, don't cut the wool if you don't want. You don't have to just because I did. Pulling the wool works just as well. And that's it for some of the most common felted soap questions that I've been asked. If I missed any or you have any still, please drop them down below. I'm happy to come back and answer them for you. Lastly, crafting is a lot of fun. It's about trial and error, trying new things, being creative. If there's a soap you want to experiment with or a wool that you want to experiment with, do it. See how it comes out. Don't be afraid to fail and try again and learn something new. And if you do, share it. The comments is a great place to share information and find information with others. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe yet if you haven't yet. And as always, if there's something you'd like to see me felt next, drop it down in the comments below. I might just make it. Don't forget those links in the description. And I'll see you in the next one. Happy felting. Bye.